Hey guys, here we are. Uh, sorry it took us a little bit of time to get things set up. Um, we had to finish with eating dinner and Lori is walking our dog Dillinger, so she will be here in a split second. But I'm so glad to see a bunch of people already here um, watching as we're going to talk a little bit about the LA Auto Show. We're going to talk about um, the experiences from SEMA over in Las Vegas. Uh, lots of different things, including just got done. They came and picked it up yesterday, a Toyota Supra media press fleet vehicle. But I see everybody coming in. Remember, if you have any specific questions, you definitely want to use the Super Chat feature. Um, I will try my best to answer as many questions possible. So as you know, we've been extremely busy. Month of November went from zero to 150 miles an hour within that uh, because of lots of great opportunities. So it's like, yes, we're busy, but it's a beautiful thing because it's nice to see OEMs, the manufacturers like Honda, inviting us out um, to things like Las Vegas with the, the SEMA show, going to the LA Auto Show and being able to experience all the different brands of cars. First time going to that show, I think one of the biggest things is just how different each of these shows are. You know, we started off the beginning of the year, we went to the Detroit Auto Show. It was just a um, regular uh, open admission day. We didn't go on the media days. Then we went to the New York Auto Show um, and we're able to experience the, the media days and it really opened up our eyes about making contacts with the different manufacturers. And, and now the great news is we're being invited to events plus going to more shows. So next year, expect a bigger schedule of activities. We have a lot more um, things that we're going to do, meet and greets and all sorts of things like that. So um, here she is. Lori is hey here. Guys. We just got done walking Dillinger. Here's There's Dillinger. Dillinger. Oh, <laughs> He's so cute. Um, but now that Lori's here, we could kind of get the ball rolling. Um, LA Auto Show. What what did you think of the event itself? Well, I thought you know it it was a, it was a great event. It was a yes. huge space, um, and obviously there were a lot of great unveils, which was really exciting to sure, see. Now we definitely. had never been to the LA Auto Show before, so we didn't know what no. to expect. Just totally different. First time. Totally different. And it definitely had a California vibe. That is for sure. It was it was not like yeah. the New York Auto Show yeah. at all. Yeah. Different vibe. Yeah, <laughs> Completely for sure. different vibe. A little bit more California laid back. Definitely a little more spacious. Yeah. And a lot less busy than yeah, the New York it, Auto it Show. Definitely. The New York Auto Show this year seems to have been the busiest when it comes to amount of people in the pageantry the press and everything. Days. From yeah. the press days. But yeah. uh, LA Auto Show, definitely different vibe, but still great. Each one has its own pluses and minuses. You know, one of the things that I know you were excited about, and I was definitely excited about, we had the um, subscriber meet and greet. Yeah, that was really and nice. And that was nice to see and meet people oh, that live yeah. over in California. Yeah, and, you know, one of the things that we were, because we're trying to figure out how sure. to make it all work so that we can meet as many folks as possible. And one of the things that we thought we would do, so we'd love to hear you chime in on this, is see if there's a way we could stick around after the press days sure. to attend a public day and then just do the meet and greet sure. a little more sporadically. Because that was the thing that we found. A lot of folks were like, gosh, I can't make it out. Yeah. So, so what we're going to do is uh, for Chicago. So the Chicago Auto Show, and I see Jay's <laughs> here. <laughs> nice hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Thanks Jay. <laughs> um, so the first auto show of the year for 2020 will be the Chicago Auto Show because Detroit has been moved to the yeah. summertime, yeah. which will be nice. Because trust me, when we went in January, it was quite miserable weather-wise. The yeah. show was great, yeah. but the weather was, was terrible. It, it was like the worst snow. So of the year. here is the plan. We fly out, I think, the first week of February, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. Those are for the media days. Right. What we're going to do, different from any other show, for the first time, we're going to do this each show for the next year, yeah. is we're going to stick around. After the media days are over, we're going to attend. Lori and I are going to attend the first open general admission day. Right. And, right. And what's the plan at the general admission day? Well, I, we haven't figured that part out yet. But it will probably be letting you guys know when we're going to be there from and then just, you know, like maybe having certain uh, yeah, places I, I, to meet I up. Think, I think what we would do is, is at the event during the general admission day, the first day, 
we would have like, hey, at 10 o'clock, yeah, 1 o'clock or whatever. Yeah, place. That's yes. where it is, Lisa. Yes. Yeah, you got it. it. looks like it's going to be nice, Yes, too. We, we can meet up at, say, meet up at the Ford area mm -hmm. or meet up at this at area. At the Shelby GT 350. Yes. Yeah, wouldn't that be a, a great thing? <laughs> Let's go meet up. Where else would you want to meet Rady's Rides? I don't know, yeah. The GT350. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that sounds yeah. good to me, but, yeah. um, but that's yeah, it was, what we're going to do. Yeah, so keep an eye out for more information on that, and we're going to do a much better job of letting you guys know. Ahead of time. Things that where we knew we kind of dropped the sure. ball a little bit of letting you know where we're going to be. I mean, we had, we had a decent turnout. There were, uh, a, was a decent number of people, but it would be nice to do it at the auto show because a lot of you guys are already going there. Plus, to be honest with you, I think we run into just a lot of people well, at the auto show. that's what shows. happened. That's why you and I decided yeah. to do it because we were like, oh, my gosh, we're running into so many people. Exactly. We may as well just, you know, kind of. And one thing I want to do before we even get started into anything is at the LA Auto Show, I definitely got to thank my wonderful, beautiful, intelligent wife, Lori, who put in the hard work. She filmed with me 36 cars in two days. Yeah. I don't so, really think about it. Yeah. I just. I she she is awesome. I appreciate it. And I love you very, very much. Well, thank you. So, thank you. Love you. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And boy, did we learn a lot. And I have my top five. Do All right. So top five? I think I do somewhere. I think you helped me write it down <laughs> I somewhere. Wrote it down. Yes. So we're going to talk about what were our faves, our, our the, the hits for us, but also the zonk. So uh, obviously, me being a gentleman and being raised right, ladies first. Okay. So my number one pick from the LA Auto Show. Favorite? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to try to take a guess at all because you saw a lot of our videos and you've uh -huh. seen some of the posts on the community page. So if you have a guess, please chime in. And while you're chiming in, if you have any questions, it's already rolling. You gotta. You can use this super chat feature, and we're gonna guarantee to answer your question. Uh, but I see right now we have about seventy-five people we're watching. Guarantee. So. Guarantee. How about yes. we do our best? Maybe yes. not guarantee. Yes. But if you super chat, yes. we're definitely gonna yes. do it for sure. Um, okay. So nobody said anything yet. Yes, well, okay. you know, Savage Raccoon. It's not technically an SUV. It's a super wagon. Yes. It's the Audi RS6 Avant. Yes. That Lori loves. So cool. Yes. Lori loved that RS6. Yeah. So cool. I mean, what is it like zero to 60 in 3.7 or 8 yeah, seconds? Yeah. It's crazy, crazy. And it had like 22 inch wheels yeah, on it that were giant. Really, really but then, nice. then the interior ergonomics were just beautiful. The thing that I would zonk about that particular car, uh -huh. if I was going to zonk, would be the price. Sure. That kind of. Stinks. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah, yeah that hurts. Yeah. So I don't think I'm going to be sure. buying one, but I still yeah. loved it. Yeah. Who doesn't well, want a super wagon? I would like to get you one one of these days. Oh, we'll you're see. very yeah. sweet. I'll we'll see if we get. But one. also, you know, the gas mileage was a little bit kind of disappointing. Who cares about gas mileage? Well, if you're driving a wagon, yeah. I don't know. Like no, if you're, you're going to get accelerating really, really fast. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it was a really cool car, and I was which color? Car. If you were to get, if you were to get an RS six. What color would you have? Well, I kind of like, I don't know what the name of it, but I kind of like the uh, the flat gray. The yeah, gray. yeah, that, that narrow type gray yeah, color. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a pretty gray. Yeah, that is a beautiful gray. Okay, uh, your turn. Oh, am I saying one of my, my this is my yeah. favorite one? Yeah. All right, so for me, my top fave, obviously I could easily just say GT350, but GT350, I'm going to move past that. At the show, a car that I got to see in person for the first time, was the Porsche GT4, also known as the Cayman GT4, also known as the 718 GT4. That car, the yellow one, absolutely gorgeous. I'm not even really a big yellow person, but it just fit the car, and the interior was like race car. It was crazy. I have not sat in a production yeah. car that like felt that. like that. Yeah. Not, I mean, that seat was And the, like and the gearbox, that wonderful six-speed transmission was just – Click, click, click. And another thing that I really liked about it is that it has a naturally aspirated flat six. Yeah. So you just let that sucker scream and row through the gears. You know, and speaking of naturally aspirated, aspirated yes. flat six, yes. which is really yes. hard to say. Aspirated. Here, hold on. Let me wipe my face. I promise you I have not been drinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, but you know, I noticed cause we, we have our list of zombies sure, over here. Sure. I noticed that there was a, a Porsche that wasn't on that list and I'm kind of surprised by the that. The 911? No, the Taycan. Mm, well, the Taycan was unveiled already and they, at the show did the 4S. Oh, we got a super chat, Benji. Oh, Benji. You guys are awesome, man. Merry Christmas, Merry Benji. Christmas. Yes. And definitely 
That's Happy sweet. holidays to everybody. We're up to 92 people oh, watching awesome. live right yes, now. Yes. So we appreciate that. Remember, if you have a question, do the super chat like Benji did, and we'll definitely answer your question or shout out or whatever you want to do. Um, and we appreciate it, obviously, because like I said, next year's a big year. We have a lot of trips coming a up. Lot. And, and we're going to try to start doing more of these Q&As regularly. Yes. So I'll save that yes. for the end. But so stay tuned for that because we're going to see if we can but, start yeah. doing more. But going back to the Takan. Yes. So they had the Takan 4S on display. It's a little it bit cheaper. the Turbo. Well, they had the Turbo and then they had this one. So the Turbo was already unveiled. Yeah. This one was the 4S. And it's interesting because remember, the Takan is Porsche's electric EV vehicle. It doesn't have a turbo. It doesn't have an internal combustion engine. They specifically use the name as marketing. And that's the thing that bothers me. I mean, I love Porsche. Same, yeah, same but thing with the, the Mach-E. Only yeah, thing. same thing with the mach -E. Yeah, it's like, that's to me, that's misleading. Yeah. And also the same thing as fake exhaust. Yeah, no. Those yeah. misleading. Why yeah. are you putting exhaust tips? Not that yeah. Porsche is doing that. Yeah. But why are some manufacturers sure. putting exhaust tips on the car? Exactly. And then it's not even an exhaust yeah, tip. It's just exactly. there for decoration. Like You're 100 that's just right. the weirdest decoration. And, and I'll be honest with you. A lot of you guys and girls know me that I'm not really the biggest EV lover. I'll review them and I'll bring them to you. I don't see one in my garage anytime soon. I'll probably be that one be last one person. Garage. Yeah, I can go in your garage. That's fine. <laughs> Um, I might be that last person still fueling up oh, at the gas you just, station. You know, you Fossil fuel. fuel. Um, uh, okay, right, so, so what's next? I think it's my turn. Okay, your turn. So, and um, Mystic TK is going to like yes, this one. Okay. So, my second favorite car of the show. The Trailblazer? Was, I'm going to actually, I have to, <laughs> I want to read the full name of this vehicle. Okay. It's the Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Daytona Wide Body 50th Anniversary Edition. Yes, there you go. That wow, say that, cool. ten, yeah, say that 10 <laughs> times fast. Yeah, I just loved it. I was really impressed. Yeah. You know, it felt great. Well, you love that four door. You love the usability. But of it. It, again, also the history. Yeah, you know, I that's mean, true. knowing true. a little bit about that was 1969 yeah. when the original Daytona, sure. and they that car was specifically made I know. to win yeah. the Daytona. Oh, yeah, exactly. Specific to win at NASCAR, and, and it, it did its first race out. Yeah. It won at Talladega. And and what's interesting is I know a lot of you guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, wow. Mal Malawi, 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 yes. Aloha, yes, thousand sub, subs. Thank you, thank you for being part of it. Thank you, you to everybody yes, for being part so of it. Yes, thank you so much. Isn't it crazy being there from the start, watching the growth yes, of this channel? It's, it's crazy. We and we love having you guys along on the ride. But let me get back real quick to Lori's choice of the Daytona. Yeah. What's interesting is a lot of people have been commenting in that review that they wish that it had the big, huge wing sure, yeah. like the original had. Yeah. Just so everybody knows, those did not sell well back in 1969. No, I mean, they it was actually sad. To race. Yeah. I mean, that's it. They made 501 of them, and they just sat at dealerships yeah, for a very long time. Yeah. yeah. So I think if they would put a big wing on the Charger Daytona, I don't think it would sell. I really don't. I don't think so either. People people get upset about Subaru with the wing on the STI. I yeah. Mean, well, but I like what they did with the rear end and how yes, they made that. With the you know, stripe, that, the stripe, mm -hmm. yeah. The, the, white, the, decal, the white with the And blue a little stripe. bit different yeah, spoiler sure. on the back, just a little bit different. And it's got like 10 additional yes. horsepower or yeah. something. I yeah. mean, nothing is on. No, it, it gets up and goes. Yeah. yeah so that was sure. fun to see. Um, my turn What now? about you? Yeah. Okay. So my next one. Um, would definitely have to be the BMW M2 CS. I had the opportunity at Furman BMW to drive the M2 competition. That was a blast. I am keeping my fingers crossed that when they get a CS, they're going to let me do a full review with a drive. Now, remember, they're only making 500 of them. Yeah. And the crazy news is, is that there is a great weight reduction in that car. You could still get it in a manual, which is the way I would get it. Oh, heck um, yeah. And just that color, the color of that, that blue, blue one with the gold beautiful. wheels. Beautiful. And that might just be my love for Subarus coming through. But no, that was, that's a totally I know, I know. It's, it's beautiful. It was, yeah. And the way, like the wheel, it, it was, was just gorgeous. Yeah, it was amazing. Under the lights, it was so beautiful. And then sitting in it, at first I was like, mm, I don't know, for it's sure. going to be a little tight. But yeah. when you start rolling through those gears, I can for only sure. imagine that yeah. that car that was, was amazing. That was drive. wonderful. All right, what do yeah. you got next? Okay, so my next favorite one, um, well, it was going to be the the Fords, the Shelby GT350R. There you go. And the GT500 there you go. right next to each other. 
the fiber sure. was orange and the mouth the mouth the nose on this sure. thing so aggressive i know oh tell me about so it it almost like it just eat you alive yeah yeah i love that and then i absolutely just i mean you sit in a gt350r and it's like sure. it's just praying you yeah. to get it on the road i know i saw you going through that six speed sitting the there car making the car sounds go. yes it wants to go and and i'll go ahead and jump in now obviously i left it for later but the GT500, the GT350 were in my top five. Yeah. I mean, you know how much I love the GT350 guys. And I don't know if you heard the big news today. Ford announced that they are doing something out of the blue. They are going to produce a heritage edition of the GT350. I don't know if you saw the movie Ford versus Ferrari. Great movie. Great good movie. Acting. Really good. Ken Miles, the driver who uh, wound up doing a lot of the development for the GT40, also did a lot of development for the GT350. Mm -hmm. And what's fascinating is that it's going to be um, the anniversary of that 65. It's 55 years, Yes, exactly. Right? And so what Ford is doing is, is they're going to produce a GT350. You could get it with the Heritage Package. It's going to have Oxford White mm -hmm. rather than Wimbledon White okay. because it's not as bright. It's more of an off-white. Like an off-white, yeah. And Which then, would match the original exactly. white. Exactly. Yeah. And then the racing stripes, instead of being Kona blue, are going to be a brighter blue, just like the That's original GC350. So beautiful. And my favorite part, which I've been saying that they should do this since day one, is the lower side stripes I, you know, along the sill. Perfect. Is gonna, and it's going to say GT350. Um, some other blue touches to match with the blue and white motif. But if I was to get a GT350, you better bet your bottom dollar that I would get Heck yeah. The Heritage. Excuse me, Heck the Heritage yeah. Edition for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much history there. So much history. But we. All, I, I also love the GT500. I just wish that it came in a manual. Yeah. I mean, that's... Surprise. Yeah. I'm, everyone yeah. here is shocked. Yeah, I'm I sure. know, right? They're, they're, um, they're shocked. <laughs> okay, so now it's okay. your turn. You're number No, I went, I went, I said... Oh, you jumped yeah, ahead, so yeah. now it's back to yeah. me? Okay. Sure. Um, so again, if you have questions and you're just dying for it to get answered... Yes. Use Please the super, super chat. chat yes. Um, we're going to keep going through our list Go and then ahead. we're going to pause and check for some questions. Mm -hmm. um, but my number four. Yes. Is, and you might be, so, oh. Whoa, Benji. Benji. What do you all think <laughs> about the 170000 up? Yes. I saw, I saw that online. Of course, dealerships are going to go bonkers with this GT500 and adding what's called adjusted dealer markup, also known as ADM. Many dealerships are in the practice of doing it now, Seems and some like of them, thing. some of them get out of control. I yeah. mean, there's a dealership here in Florida that is getting an S two hundred nine, a Subaru S two hundred nine, and I think they have it marked at one hundred thirty thousand dollars. So it's not just a GT five hundred thing. I think you would have to be literally insane to buy a GT500 at $170,000. Well, I mean, you just must have money that you're- Burn, like, yeah. If, 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 you have the, if you have that kind of money, I hope you're watching and you super chat. Yes, and put some money away for your retirement. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> help people in need for business. Yes, I know, Why right? just doing that? It's just so throwing, ridiculous. So I think that's a little out of control. It, is the GT500 a great performer? No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But not at a price tag of $170,000. I mean, um, that's just- and so I wanted to take a second just to scroll sure. up here and see what kind of questions are missing. Okay, sure. And just point out to uh, Mystic that we are going to address some zonks. Yes, and zonks are coming. We start yes. with the good things first, and then the zonks are going to follow. So it wouldn't be a Rady's Rides episode, whether live or um, doing a review without That's zonks. right. That's right. All right. So I'm going to come back to some of these questions okay. that we're looking at because it's going to take me sure. a minute to sift through. Sure. Um, and I have to tell you my number four. Okay. Car. So my number four car is the Audi RS Q8. Yes, you love that. And RS you may Q8. say, well, why, Lori? Yes. Why? It's an, an SUV. SUV. Yes. Oh my gosh, what yes. are you thinking? Yes. And first of all, Java Green is the sickest color. You've that ever Java seen. Green, that was like incredible. It just Hall had me color. a hello. I was just yes. like, like a moth. I know, it right? was just beautiful. You have to see this color. The other thing is, you know, there's something to be said about this car being the fastest. Yeah, SUV, SUV around the Nurburgring. Beating the Lamborghini Urus. Yeah, yes, I know. Cool. Tell me about it. I mean, it's kind of cool. I think Jay's in love by what I, you're saying there, <laughs> for sure. I mean, it's, what, it's, like, it's the same engine. Yeah, I mean, it's in the RS6. The RS6 Avant, yes. right? 
And um, it's you know the six. You're Are you 16. an Audi fan, girl? Is that what no. this is? I better buy her an Audi shirt and hat. Yeah, you better. Yeah, it has to be that Java green. That's color. right. Can you imagine me running around in that color? <laughs> People would be very concerned. But I just thought it was Java cool. green. Pants. I am gonna zonk it because I like it. But I'm on, I'm gonna zonk it too. I wouldn't necessarily buy it. Yeah, I know. Wow. The piano black. Uh, listen, I'm kind of Joe and I yeah. are. Sim- I'm sure you're surprised black. to know that we're very similar. I don't want to have all. It was a lot. Yeah, it was. It was too much. It was like all across. There was the a little house. too much gloss black in there, and I wish they would have used carbon fiber. If you're going to charge one hundred thirty thousand dollars for an SUV, give me some more carbon fiber. Yeah. Or, or how about let's go different materials? Maybe something like brushed aluminum or that would have been nice. I mean, because I know they were trying to go upscale with it, but I don't yeah. know. I feel like the overuse of Piano Black is yeah. starting to downscale it somehow. I don't know. I don't definitely, just, definitely. Yeah. So that was my. That I can understand. I can understand. That was my number understand. four. Okay. That was my number. Four. Well, my number four has a zonk in it as well. Okay. But I, when I saw it, and I know some of you are going to be like, "Joe, you're crazy." If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm the type of person I like when manufacturers take cars and then they do things to them. Now, I know we could all do them ourselves, like we can modify a car in your garage and all that kind of stuff, but it's cool to get these special limited editions. Yeah. One car that just, I've been waiting for it, and I can't wait to drive one, is the um, John Cooper Works, uh, the mini John Cooper Works GP uh, car. That thing had styling on it, which I've never seen before. Those, the way that yeah, the, so the fender cool. flares were, were so I mean, cool. it was unbelievable. They actually take recycled, recycled carbon fiber uh, material from the BMW i8 assembly line and make the fenders out of that carbon fiber material. Yeah, which is is awesome. Of course, I love the front of it, the big wing in the back, rear seat delete. I mean, there's not many manufacturers doing that, especially in a hatchback. Oh yeah, things. I mean that thing is like a little terror for the road. The 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 challenge is is that it's got uh, an eight-speed automatic transmission. Isn't that disappointing? An enthusiast car and no I, option for well, a manual. And I no love I love Mini's answer. They mm-hmm. said that their manual can't handle the torque mm-hmm. of the um, modified engine. And my thing is is well, just make a better. Make a stronger transmission. I mean, a, a ZR1 Corvette has 755 horsepower, and they it have does. a manual. It does. So um, I it love. It be a fun car yeah. to drive. Oh, I, I want to do it. I would love to do a track oh, day. Oh, heck thing, yeah! For sure. Those I mean, small cars yeah. like that, boy, they're a blast. For That's sure. why whenever we went to do at the Ford Performance yes. Racing School, the Fiesta was, was my a favorite. Blast. Oh was my a blast. gosh! So much yeah, fun. it was a blast. All right, so what we got next? Okay, my number five. Yes. My number five was the C8 Corvette. Because yes. I finally got to see it in person with my very own eyeballs. Yeah, I've been talking about it. But <laughs> I got to see it at Road Atlanta. Uh, Tom and I drove to Stingray Chevrolet to review it in front of over 100 people, which was a little nerve-wracking, but we, we pulled it off. Um, but this was your first time. Yeah, it was crazy, though, too. Even at the press days, they wouldn't let us sit in They wouldn't let us sit in it. So I had to like lean what, over what is with going the camera on in this? I mean, and Joe's so, like pointing yeah, stuff out. Just, when you guys watch the review again, you'll see. It's with the unbelievable. You, you got you guys would be shocked to know the behind the scenes. Oh stuff. my gosh, it's just unbelievable. Do you remember? What, so we were waiting in line to film the Mach E, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Yeah. There were people climbing over the glass rails. Yeah, they were like the, the adults, going on the display. Not children, yeah. adults that media are media people. <laughs> like it was like a zoo. Sure, the I know. It Tell me about it. It was it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Was yes, yes. Um, but you know, I just it was really nice to see it. Beautiful car. Yes, I agree about the back end. I think yes. most people agree. It kind of looks like a squished Camaro. Sure. I'm not sure. Um, I love my favorite part that in on sitting inside. Is that steering wheel? Yeah, that thing is cool. That's a beautiful steer. They did a great job with the steering wheel and yeah. how it allows you clear visibility forward. And then, of course, you got the flat bottom as well. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not sure. I'm potentially zonking. I am on the fence about the waterfall of buttons. Yeah, the waterfall of AC controls and all yeah. that. Oh wow! Wow, oh, super chat. Thank you. Hey, so, guys. Abishag Jane, hi Joe. Which oh, is the best nice car? To see you. What, what, which is the best car for two that for me? Um, well, what's interesting is that Thanks, you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Oh, Eric, you're really thank you so much. Eric uh, just did a super chat. Hey guys, did you see where that car hauler in Detroit? Oh, yes, 
I saw I that. Did not Actually, see Benji, that. Oh, Benji sent disaster. me pictures of it, yes. And then David super chat as well. The just Ford saw the movie last Ferrari. night. Yes, it is. You, if you have not seen Ford versus Ferrari, you, you know, definitely need to see it. It's just a good movie. You, it's a great movie. Great yeah. story. Um, now, good question about 2019. So I'm Best gonna be car. I'm mm. gonna be putting a video together of my top 10 hits okay. from 2019. Good idea. Now, one thing to be aware of, everybody, here on Radies Rides, if you haven't figured it out yet, we review a lot of cars. We kind of review them all. Right now, we have over a thousand reviews, separate reviews on the channel because of things. Well, so are you. No, so are you. I just like to take breaks and have yes, snacks. That's true. Um, I like snacks too. Yes. Who doesn't like snacks? That's right. Twizzlers. But uh, yes, Twizzlers. <laughs> Lays. Slim Jims. Slim Jims. <laughs> like we said around the <laughs> But anyways, um, so I'm going to be putting a video together, Abhishek Jane. Uh, I don't mean to cop out on your question, um, but definitely one of the highlights for me would be the GT500. I mean, that car is a beast. Yeah, but uh, okay. So let me ask power, a, but, a question here. Sure. Does the S209 technically technically qualify as a 2019 car? Well, yeah, it's 2019. It's a 2019. Yeah, yeah. All these other ones are 2020. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, we have another question um, here from Eric. Oh, wait, we are so Eric, so yeah, Eric. When I saw that trailer flipped over, I actually Benji. When did this happen? It happened. I would probably say within the last week they were delivering because they've started deliveries of GT five hundred to dealerships, oh and it was gosh. toppled over. I believe there was a grabber lime uh, colored GT five hundred, and then there was another one just laying there on the side. Oh, that's such yeah. a sad, yeah, sad very sight. terrible. I would, I would have been more than happy to take it. You know, if that one's going in the in the dumpster, I'll 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 be more than happy to take oh, it. Oh, you're hilarious. Um, thank you so much, yes. David. Thank you. Another Eric. thing. Thank you, Abishak. Yes, and definitely thank you, Benji, as well. Thank you so much, Benji. Really appreciate your super chats, guys. Another Thanks. thing to say about the Ford versus Ferrari movie at the LA Auto Show, they had the winning for GT40 there. Gosh, yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. Black I mean, with the racing stripe. What a yeah. story. Crazy it's story, It's just yeah. unbelievable, um, really. So yeah, so I will be coming forward with my favorites from 2019. Lots of cars for me to go through. Yep. So stay tuned to that, because that's going to be totally separate. Now, you did have two other cars on the list that I've already talked about, and we've yes. already talked about the GT500. Yes. So, so my last fave, from the LA Auto Show that really stood out to me, and I've been waiting for this, is the Audi RS6. Yeah. I mean, the fact that that car is only going to be sold in the United States for just next year. Yeah. They're only bringing how many per dealership? Two. Two per dealership. That is something that you're just not going to see. It's going to be gone. So uh, if you want one of those, I hope you have good connections at your local Audi dealership. I know Wesley Chap Audi of Wesley Chapel is going to, Give us an uh, opportunity to drive. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Would you like to be there for that yes, one? Yes, like of course. That. So stay tuned for that. But that's really our hit of the LA Auto Show. Yeah. Before we get to the zonk, should we look at any yeah, of these? Yeah, let's take a look at through. And if you have a burning question that you would like. We have a good one right here. Oh, okay. So that, that dude asked, um, why only two per dealership? I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you straight up, as always. Americans do not like wagons how do we know that because nobody really buys them we may sit here and say i want a wagon i'm done with suvs why aren't people buying them and that's the funny thing that i've been finding a lot as i as i go along this this journey reviewing all these different cars and whatnot and listening to what people want a lot of times manufacturers will listen but then nobody buys it so i think that's the obviously the main reason is that over in Europe. They'll sell RS6s out the yin-yang. Here in the United States, for Audi, it's a gamble. We are here, and we're saying, yeah, we would buy it. Unfortunately, I don't have 120 grand to go buy one. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if there are any dealerships where these RS6s just sit. What else we got? Um, so we have a question here from sure. P.P. Gilder. Okay, interesting. Brig, I want to say it. Brig Mattias, most cold nine iron ab don't. Wow. I didn't even know you could have a username that long. It's awesome. Yes. And it's it's really, really good. Yes. Um, but he or she is uh, loved your review of the EcoBoost Mustang with a performance pack. Would you approve of it as a daily driver? Of course. An, e an EcoBoost Mustang uh, or Mustang EcoBoost technically as it's yep. referred to would make a perfect daily driver. 
Um, but even a Mustang GT would be a great daily driver. Of course, if you're daily driving it, you're going to get some better fuel economy um, compared to the Mustang GT. But either or uh, are great cars to drive. They're very comfortable. And of course, you got the classic Mustang look, which everybody loves. Uh, Sir Merv uh -huh. wants to know, biggest zonk of 2019. LOL, I hope you read this. We read it. Yes, we did read it. <laughs> um well, do you want to go into, should we go into zonks of the show? Yet, Hold or? that thought, Sir Merv, because yes. we're going to go yes, into zonks gonna, yes. of the show. Because one of the biggest zonks is at the show. I promise you that. Yeah. Um, Alec wanted to know about um, you if you have any info on the GMC, their new Yukon. Uh, yes, it is going to be unveiled. It's you know it's going to be officially in front of my eyes in Chicago. So when we get to Chicago, we're going to be taking care of the Tahoe and the Yukon and all that good stuff. And hopefully, fingers crossed. I don't know if it'll be Chicago, probably New York, or maybe Detroit. Uh, the new Escalade, the Cadillac Escalade is coming, finally redesigned. That's going to be a big one. Yeah. Jose Santos wants to know which SUV brand you prefer, Audi, Infiniti, or Lexus. This actually might bring us into our Zonk list okay. because um, we, sure, we have yeah. one of those okay. brands we were a little at, disappointed with. Out of the choices that you mentioned, I personally, from my experience behind the wheels of those SUVs, I would go with Lexus. Yeah, I, I, I like Audi, but I don't know. I, I, I'm, I, I've, I've enjoyed my time in the Lexus products. Um, the challenge with Audi is that for me, they would have to be RS models. I would, it would have to be an RS Q8. Oh yeah, it, it, to drive. Just I'll take to, it for me. Just to drive. You can Q, have the Lexus. Uh, the Q3 doesn't I'll do anything Q, for me. Well, the Q8. You RS Q8. The R. Oh yeah, it yeah. has to be RS. Of course, yeah. Well, that's what I. That's yeah. what I was. Saying. Okay, well, that's what I said. Okay, too. well, good. See, we, well, good. we do think alike. There we you agree. go. Um, all right. There's people that are asking. What? Um, I know Mystic wants to What's know. What's my favorite flavor ice cream? That is what she, Mystic was wanting. Chocolate to peanut butter ice cream <laughs> is my favorite. I could eat that by the gallon. So, oh, we got Eric. <laughs> Eric, you're so awesome, man. Generous. Thank you, Eric. That's really awesome. So, Eric just super chatted again. Uh, he says, I'm psyched for the 2021 Mach 1 Mustang. Uh, word is it's going to get the Tremec 6 speed. Yes, I am also very excited for that as well. And Tell I us think, about the Mach 1 Mustang. So Mach 1 is such an iconic name when it comes to the Ford Mustang. Um, it, it evokes so much from that muscle car era. It was reincarnated many times along the way. But I think that this time around, it's going to be extra special because of them putting the Tremec 6 speed. Yeah. That Tremec from the GT350 is one of the many reasons why I want a GT350. Yeah. And, you know, you guys are so great. It was so cool. Some of the subscribers that came out to the meet and greet in California, they were like, man, I hope you get that GT350. Oh, Benji, you're really awesome. Benji, Thank you, Benji. Christmas. So sweet. But, but yes, Eric, I can't wait for that Mach 1. I think that they're going to unveil it at Detroit. That's what I think they're going to hopefully surprise us and, and unveil so it at Detroit. we have to wait until June? Yes. No, yeah, June, because I was going to say January. Yeah, That's no, right. we got to wait till June. Uh, Benji, uh, he says, I would love a wagon, but I can't afford them. Matter of fact, one of my dream cars, yes, definitely the Nomad. That is a car that uh, <laughs> really evokes a, a lot of – uh, a lot of memories of people for muscle cars because the Nomad, you could get it pretty souped up from the factory, even though it was a wagon. Yeah, that's true. So that's cool. I'm a big fan of wagons. Yeah, I, just I know. Think you awesome. like the usability. and It makes you want to get a big golden retriever. There you go. It, so my little chihuahua is going to have to get a little bit bigger for me to get oh, a we can big get the wagon. TTRS. I can just borrow the neighbor's dog. There you go. In the back. Um, all right, all so right. we were going to talk about our zonks. Zonks, let's let's nail it. So them. why don't we rip the bandaid off and yes. talk about the big blue zonk? That God. okay. So the Mustang Mach. -E. Yes. How do we feel about the Mustang Mach? -E? Do you want me to go first? You want yes, to I think you okay. should go first. So Mustang Mach E, if they would have just kept it as Mach E, that sounded cool to me. Great. E means electricity. You got the Mach One. You have the Mach E. It's like a I get it. Mm -hmm. Why, oh, why would you desecrate the Mustang name by putting it on an EV? And I know why. You know why. It's all about marketing, guys. They want to take advantage of what the Mustang name means to people and get them excited about an EV because Ford is scared 
that maybe nobody would want the Maki if it wasn't revolving around the Mustang the name Mustang and brand, some of yeah. the styling cues. One of the most ridiculous things that I heard at the LA Auto Show is one of the Ford representatives saying that the Maki is going to pump in V8, so not like V8 specifically, but a deep growl through the speaker system as you're driving. Wow. Yes. Huh. I don't have a problem really anymore. I'm kind of getting over synthetic sound, but in an EV, that's there. there there's no end. There's no engine. There's a motor. Remember, there's a difference. Engine is what a lot of us have. Internal combustion engine. Motors are electric. It does so. kind of look like a Mustang and an SUV had a baby. It does. It got most of the it does. Of the SUV. It does. Though. And it's listen. <laughs> it's gonna. It's gonna. Yeah, I know, right? It's gonna be a performer, no doubt about it. What electric vehicle like the Tesla Model X and all that isn't it's a performer? Well, it's. An, I think it's an exciting. It's vehicle. exciting. And their display was beautiful. I think the thing that bothers me the most is that it kind of makes me feel like. Oh, man. Thank, thank you, Manny. Thank you. Thank you so much. Manny just super chat. Thank you guys for the hard work you guys are doing for staying humble by reading our comments and taking our comments request. Of course. You Absolutely. guys You guys make the channel. I mean. We love doing yes. this Q&A so much. And I, I love, love reading the, you guys. love reading the comments because I want to know what you guys are thinking. Hey, what did you guys think of his live review? Do you, do you see that live review that he did by himself with his iPhone of the Highlander? <laughs> I was impressed. I thought he did Thank such a good you. job. Thank you, sweetie. The whole thing, from start to finish, you did. It was outstanding. If you haven't seen that, you should because it shows you what it's true. So, so is. just to, just to, I was sort of touching on this earlier. Each of the manufacturers have different rules. Summer. Oh, Summer. Thank, thank you. you. We really appreciate that. I own a Mustang SVO. I remember that Mustang SVO. That's my project car. Do you think the new EcoBoost Performance Pack is a worthy successor? Thanks in advance. Um, good question, by the way. Yeah, let me answer his question since he definitely super chatted. Then yeah. we'll, we'll get back. The SVO, I like the SVO. I remember back in high school, I had a friend that had one. It was different. It was just different. And we didn't bust his chops about it not being a V8. And it's, you know, it's one of those things everybody thinks a Mustang is supposed to have a V8. Mustangs had a straight six. Yeah. You could get a 1965 Mustang with a straight six. But I think the EcoBoost performance pack, or excuse me, high performance package, it's different. It's different than what the SVO was. I think, though, it's for it's perfect for somebody. There are people out there as crazy as it sounds, guys. That you know, they don't want to be in a Mustang. I know that sounds I don't insanity. Think that doesn't sound. But insanity. that car performs. I'm telling you right now, and the way that it handles, especially with the handling package, it, it's really, really wonderful. Um, so, uh, you know, it's nice to see manufacturers at least taking that into consideration. They have high performance packages with the PP1 and the PP2 and the GT. Yep. Bring it. My thing was my zonk for the high performance package Mustang. Why not just make it 350 horsepower? Yeah. Why are we playing these stupid games saying, hey, it's a Ford Focus RS motor and it's the same thing. Well, they just turn make it, it sideways and shut yeah, it in. Make it 350 horsepower. You know why they won't do it? It's the same thing that they do with the Mustang name on the Mach-E. It's because you could potentially make that EcoBoost easily from the factory faster than a Mustang GT. Hmm. You can. You put a big enough turbo. You put a big enough intercooler. It's going to be faster than the Mustang GT. And there's no way in God's green earth Ford is going to allow that to happen. And I'm sure many of the fans of the Mustang GT wouldn't want that to happen. No. I mean, that's the bottom line. No. Same thing with the Ford Focus RS. Ford Focus RS could have had even more power, but they don't want it to be faster than a Mustang. Well, that's You can't true. have a hatchback be faster than a muscle car. No. God forbid. No. This is, you can't do that. But anyway, so there, so there you go, uh, uh, Manny. About hopefully that motor. answered your question. Yeah, hopefully it took that, me yeah. on a wild ride. Yes, that. I know. I take it. Was a, fun. Yes. Um. <laughs> so Zonk, so Mustang Maki, definitely the yeah. biggest Zonk. I think it's an exciting car. Yes. It's just to me a little disappointing that they're using the Mustang. What do you think about that big tablet-sized screen that they kind of stuck in there with duct it's tape? It's weird. It's it's weird. huge. What? Where is this obsession coming? From that we need 80 inch infotainment systems. I don't know screens. what are people doing while they're driving. That's what I, I know. know. Well, I know they're on their phones. Like, can't you just listen to music? I know they're picking their nose. Book. I see them do that a lot when I'm doing reviews. Shaving. <laughs> Ew. 
Ooh. eating Twinkies and donuts and Apparently, all that, which yes. is fine because yes. I'm around with that. Love yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, I'm sorry I got passionate about that for a second. Oh, you I'm passionate just, about cars? I know, what? right? We're all shocked yeah. right now. I'm so surprised. Yes. Um, okay, so we were also going to do a few more songs. Yes. You want me to go next? I, you know, I'm wondering if that's you. I, that's what I'm. All right, another one, and you saw the review. I'm sure if you didn't, definitely check it out. I pretty much sunk the whole car just because I was so disappointed. The new Chevrolet Trailblazer. What is going on, everybody? <laughs> Chevrolet has a lineup of SUVs that spans a mile. Oh, John, thank John, you. Thanks. You helped me design a CRV. I passed Good on choice. a new Outback because of it. It's huge screen. Definitely. Both out yeah, great yeah. too. Yeah, they're both great. But they're, CRB, they're, yeah, they're, both, they're both, nice. great. both like great. Them, yeah. um, But what's going on? Where was I? What was I? Oh, oh, you were on a where, rampage okay, about yes. the Trailblazer. What's going on about Chevrolet with this lineup of SUVs? They got the Spark. They got the Equinox. They got the Traverse. They, I mean, now they get another one. And they already pissed everybody off about the Blazer. So now they just kind of stuck it to everybody again. What's going to – listen, honestly – What's going to happen when Ford comes out with this Bronco? I'm nervous. What does Chevy have to go up against the Bronco? I don't know. I don't know. Got me? Yeah. I guess they'll have to create an all-new SUV or something. Thank you, Benji. Yes. Right. Yes. Every car yes. person yes. listens to the motor. Yes. You yes. know, and then you turn the radio yes. off yeah. so that yeah. you can hear exactly. the engine and all the sounds. But, um, but yeah, agree, definitely another big zonk with the Trailblazer. I was expecting something off-road worthy. Um, just to just to fill was, in that gap, and I think for me, so after we did the review, I was like, "Is it that bad?" Because when we're doing the review and I'm filming, I'm just focused yeah. on the shot, right? Yeah, so of I'm course. not really You're doing such an awesome job. Thank you very nice. much. And so I was like, "I want to see for myself." Sure. And so I sat in the driver's seat, and it was just kind of like you know, like I don't know if you've ever made a souffle, but if it just kind of yeah goes like a souffle collapsing yeah. slowly, it was it's, very it sad. was terrible. And then and then I was like hitting the plastics. It was. And I mean, it's a good value, twenty thousand dollars. You get your choice of two, three cylinder turbo engines. Whoa! Yes, not one, but two. I, it's just interesting. Yeah, so that that was a major zonk. Okay. I was I was really hoping for something. There's some really great comments here. John Viscardo chimed in. What's by the way. up, John Viscardo? John Viscardo is one of my old teacher friends from Ridgewood yeah, High School. Yeah. He was a teacher as well, and was smart enough to leave the profession. Yes, as well, so. yeah. Um, okay, so we have some really great comments here sure. I wanted to read as well. Brandon, thanks so much. Your channel's the best. Keep doing what you're yeah, doing. Thank you, Brandon. New Tahoe over the Trailblazer. How do you feel about that? Um, you know, not. I, I would say that, that so far from what I've seen, they did a better job in the Tahoe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, than the Trailblazer for yep, sure. Yeah, well, let's scroll up and see if we can okay. find some more questions here. Um, Robert wants to say, hi. Hey, Robert. What's up, Robert? Great job. Channel is so informative and fun. Thanks. Uh, it's such a great time to be an auto enthusiast. Really yes, is. for sure. It really is. I mean, there have been other decades that are great as well, like the 90s um, and the 80s. But, um, yeah, but those it, were still, they had their, their songs. Yes. That would, <laughs> those you days. think? Um, Citizen Genuine. Ooh. Thanks for sharing your inputs of your experience, which helps a lot of folks. It sure. really does. Just wanted to, oh, whoa. Oh. Um, hold on one second. I think second. we got a super chat. Oh, right, keep going. oh my goodness. Yeah. We yes, did. Josh. Thank Thanks, you. Josh. Thanks for your reviews on the 2020 RAV4 Hybrid and the 2021 RAV4 Prime. Yes, I would wait for 2021. The RAV4 has surprised me this year. It really has, especially the hybrid with the extra performance that you're getting. I don't know if you saw, but after the live feed, I did post the RAV4 TRD off-road. It's the first time that they've offered the TRD off-road on the RAV4, that trim level. Um, it's a, it's over $40,000. I'm curious to, to know what you guys think. So if you have not seen that video yet, I just posted it tonight, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Definitely check it out. But Josh, you are so very Thank welcome. You, and I'm very, very happy for you to be able to watch. And definitely, I would hold off for that RAV4 the Prime. The RAV4 Prime is really 303 exciting. 303 horsepower. I can't wait to drive. Zero to 60 in like 5.8 seconds. Yeah. I think they said that that's the second fastest Toyota, second to the Supra. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. Uh, I wanted to finish finish Citizen Genuine's yes. question. Okay. He, um, he or she was wondering, insight on the Acura MDX for the next generation. Do you happen to have any? Yes, I do. But hold on to that thought. Alba! For Alba thank hey, you, Alba. Alba. You're always so generous. So thank so you. Sweet. You thank guys, you so you're awesome. You're yes, awesome. Yes, 
Really appreciate that. Thank you, Alva. Definitely, if you like I said, if you have an important question or a comment, you can use the super chat feature. We appreciate everything. And like I said before, it all goes back into the channel. New gear, more trips. Yeah, so more we can see you guys the shows. Yes, so exactly. we can stay that extra day. Yes, the for sure. Things like that. But um, MDX. MDX. Next MDX and the next generation is going to be awesome, guys. The reason why is they're going to get rid of that dual screen setup. Same thing on the TLX. Same thing on the ILX. Something must have happened over the past few years at Acura where a fire has been lit under their rear ends to say, hey, we need to go back to what Acura is all about. Yeah. So they did a great job with the exterior design of the MDX, the interior with the two screens. No. Yeah, no. And that, that kind of leads us into- Is that going to change for the next generation? Yes. It's going to be like the RDX, which the RDX has that nice- Because that was the thing I didn't like about yeah. the MDX, but I really like the know. MDX. Yes. I know. Was, yeah. You like the way it drove. One of my, one of my whole favorite nine yards. SUVs, yes. yeah. Um, but that would lead us into another Zonk. Ah, uh, yes. So I another guess. Zonk, and we're actually- I'm actually- This is coming from me. Is it coming from uh, some from you? The, that one? No, that's yeah. that's all me. That's all you. All right, I'll I'll own this one, everybody. <laughs> it's on me, and we do have a, over a hundred people watching right now live. Well, I don't really remember, so it has okay. to be all you. Well, the, the, well that, that I was, was in probably, the zone. That's probably why it was a zombie because you don't remember. <laughs> that actually. There you go. <laughs> yeah, now we know why it is a yeah. zonk. I am actually going to zonk the whole Infinity brand. Why? For the auto show. For the auto show, yeah. For the auto show. For the yeah. auto show. For the auto show. The reason why is when, oh, when are they going to come out with something new? Hmm. When are they going to redesign some of their vehicles? You know, we talked about Acura with their interior. What about Infinity interior? They also have the dual screen setup. Mm -hmm. They had, and I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. If you don't, it's obviously Rady's Rides on Instagram. I like to keep it simple like that. Go to my Instagram if you have not seen it. There was a picture that I posted of this concept car that Infinity did, mm -hmm. and it was awesome. It was that Project Black one okay. that had the crazy spoiler on it. Yeah, yeah, kind of I stuff. remember that. They obviously can do it. We've seen Infinity do great things over the past. Do it now. So if you're an Infinity fan... No, nothing personal. It never is. No, but it was the display, really. The display. It's like just the they had white show. carpet. It's like, they had yeah. white carpet. I it would was, love to see what that white carpet looked wait, like. Is that where I got that weird that smoke weird coffee. smoke coffee? <laughs> that was strange. That's why you don't remember anything. I, is that weird smoke? I was really focused yes. on the smoked coffee, the smoke and it was coffee. very strange. I put that on my one answer. thing. Well, let, let me let me <laughs> let me tell them at the media days. They at each of the different. Um, Booths, you know, for the manufacturers, they have special snacks and drinks for us to, you know, consume while we're there. We just got a super chat. Oh, another super chat. Yay! Buddy, buddy, thank you, buddy. Uh, buddy says, Explore Test Drive ST. ST soon. Your videos convinced me to check it out. Yes. Definitely want to check out the Explorer ST. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw a couple days ago, I posted Raptor versus Explorer ST. When the people at Walker Ford heard that I wanted to review those two cars together, those two vehicles together, they looked at me like there was something wrong with me. I thought it was a, a legitimate question. Does a base Raptor, would you go base Raptor for 60 grand? Yeah. Or would you go pretty much fully loaded, except for the performance brake option, Explore ST? I think That's it's a, a excellent question. I think it's valid. Yeah. Zero to 60, they're pretty close, zero to 60. Now, obviously, on the street, the ST Explorer ST is going to outhandle the hell out of the Explore, uh, the, Ra the uh, Raptor. But if the road it's a gets, great comparison. The road ends, Raptor's going to win. But it's a it's a great. <laughs> a great if Mad Max, <laughs> yes. Thunderdome suddenly happens, Raptor's the way to go. <laughs> um, all right, all right. So Infinity was a letdown for me at the show. The smoked coffee was interesting, however. Yes, definitely check um, out her Instagram, <laughs> Lori Rady on Instagram. <laughs> Um, what about this Buick Encore GX? How'd you feel about that? Yeah, um, not feeling it. No? You know, Buick. So we were talking about the 1980s real briefly just a second ago. Think about it. The Buick Grand National. That was a car that- That was a special car. V6 twin turbo that would beat a Corvette in a quarter mile back in the 1980s. Um, 
whatever happened to Buick? So the I super chat. Oh, thank you, Hamilton. We really thank appreciate. You. Thank you very much. But going back to my other my mother, are you zonking this too? Or is this just on me? No, too? we're zonking. Okay, we're both. This is a, a I was a busy together. at the infinity. Yes. Was getting yes, coffee. yes. So I but wasn't Buick, paying attention at all. The Buick Encore GX. I was hoping for something more performance oriented. It's the same thing as basically the Trailblazer. Yeah. We have another super chat. Oh, William thank you, Bindi. William. Thank you, William. What thank do you think you so of the new Mercedes touchpad over the older touchpad? Hmm. Um, I think the newer one, if you give it some time, will actually work out better. The, the challenge with Mercedes Benz, especially with me, is that when I go to a dealership to review a Mercedes Benz product, they're complicated. Some of their systems and their cars, even like that My Mercedes thing, gives me a freaking headache. Here's the great news. We, and when I say we, we're talking about Radies Rides and you guys, we're going to be getting Mercedes-Benz press fleet vehicles after the new year. So Very expect some more in-depth, better, uh, thorough uh, reviews. It makes such a difference. It, it does. Such, which actually kind of brings me to one of the other topics that we wanted to talk about. Because when we were at the LA Auto Show, yes. I do wanted- Do you want to finish the Oh, sorry. Yes. You want to do the last song? Um, oh, well, I mean, it's like a- I'm going to zonk it. it. To me, it's like it's like a half zonk. Okay, half it's, zonk. It's kind of like how I feel about- It's a full zonk to me. All right. All right. Are you going to want me to go? Yeah, well, it's the Subaru White Series display. Yeah. yeah. So at the LA Auto Show, Subaru unveiled the Series White display. Mm-hmm. And they had the WRX, the STI. We got another super chat. Hey, Thank Abishai. you, Abishai Jane. Thank you. Yes. Genesis. Going to be, be Lexus, Infinity, and Acura soon? You know what? Genesis keeps up and up in their Boy, game. do they. Uh, wait until you see this, this SUV up. that they've been working on. I've seen some spy shots of it. I've talked with some of the Genesis representatives. They have actually two separate SUVs that are going to be coming. Their cars keep getting better and better. Um, their concierge service where they come and pick up your vehicle for oil changes and things like that. Wow. The biggest challenge for Genesis is they need standalone dealerships. Yeah. They need a break. If, if, if you're, gonna, if you're not going to be Hyundai, you need a break away they do. They and do. have separate dealerships because people that buy those types of vehicles, high-end luxury vehicles, they want a certain experience when they go to get their car serviced, when they're buying their car. And I think some of the Honda dealerships just don't make that happen. I'm just laughing at some yeah, of the You're chat. fine. I, oh, I know. Trust Folks, me. So I like fireballs as well, Alva. Trust me. Um, you know, so I want to actually also explain to you about the, the – we're not zonking Subaru. I'm not zonking, I'm not zonking Su Subaru. But and I'm, Infinity makes some great cars too. I don't want anybody to be offended. Yeah, I'm not – yeah. But the Subaru display, the Series White, it was like – off in the corner. It was terrible. It was like by the toilets. There were not even, it was any, really weird. any lights. Like the videos you saw, like the lighting was just and and, and, they, and they didn't really even announce very well the series that the BRZ no. was going to be, no. the TS, the BRZ TS was going to be they there. Didn't. None of that. So and that to me. The for me, I wanted to get up close and personal yeah. with an S209. She I hasn't been up close. It. Yeah, we've seen it at the show, but you haven't sat in it. No. Yeah. And yeah. I was just kind of expecting, okay, sure. they're starting to hit dealers yeah. floors now. Maybe they'll have one. And I know that there's a very limited amount, but they didn't have They have, have one some extras. Them. They have I some extra media media press. They events. did have German Shepherds. Yes, they did have an awesome – So it was awesome. Some of you guys who watched the WRX Series uh, White and the um, BRZTS – it was right next to where they were having an adoption, dog adoption there were center. all these German shepherds. Somebody literally asked me <laughs> in a comment, did awesome. you add the dog sounds or is <laughs> yes. that real? Yes. We added Trust me, I'm not adding <laughs> any animal sounds. No, no. Maybe I should do that. Like get like a chicken, a cow. Ooh, that would be fun. Yeah. Plus we'll do that. Yeah. We'll run out of snacks. Oh, Eric, man. Thank you so much, Eric. So generous. Thank really you. Really That's really nice. awesome of you. And Eric, uh, just super chat again. He said, since Ford is any production, do you think you could find a Fusion Sport and Taurus show to review? Yes, I'm actually working on that. I, I You must be reading my mind or – um, looking in our windows or something, which I, I hope nobody's doing that. But um, the reason why is I'm literally going to Walker Ford next Friday, not this Friday, because tomorrow's Friday. Tomorrow's Friday. Um, yeah. Next Friday, we're going to do the Fusion Sport. Nice. So uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get a Taurus uh, show or SHO, however you want to say it. Um, but I'm going to get him, and don't you worry, I will bring him to you. Uh, somebody brought up a question Are we going to see a 600 horsepower Type RA for me? 
No. The reason why is I still am working hard towards that goal of getting a Shelby GT350. So that's why, you know, any money extra that I have laying around, it, it's it's not going to soup up the type of right. I want a Shelby GT350. Do you, do you know that I want a Shelby GT350? I heard that somewhere. Yeah. I think when you were dreaming, I think you just. Yeah, I just making like the mumbling. Food. Yeah, you were the just voodoo like, sounds. Sound Eight thousand two hundred fifty <laughs> RPM engine sound while I'm sleeping. She sleepwalks, yes. and that's all he does. It makes engine sound. Yes. Um, so we so we did the Subaru. Yeah, and that was it for the Zonks. But we were going to talk about something else. Yes. So one thing that Lori was not able to go to because of her busy work schedule was SEMA. Honda actually flew us out to Las Vegas for the Civic Si and also for the SEMA show. I'm telling you right now, guys, I can't wait to go next year. It melted my brain. There were so many, so many vehicles at SEMA, so many people. And the fact that it's closed to the public, the general public, I thought there were going to be less people there. There was more people than at the LA Auto it's Show crazy. or, or Detroit, Detroit Auto Show. It's so crazy. SEMA was cool. Lots of great cars. We are definitely going to be going back. And the, one of the last things we want to talk about tonight as we're going to start to slowly wrap this uh, this show up here, is the Supra. Oh, boy. So, so when we – I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, we saw the Supra and m multiple times at different yeah. car shows. Oh, yeah. We saw it unveiled at the Detroit show. And we were show. both kind of like, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then I sat in it. You sat in it too. But when I sat in it, I instantly was like, I don't think I like this. Yeah, car. the LA Auto Show. She sat in the yellow oh, one. I just, just – no. It's she didn't like it. And then Joe got his press fleet vehicle. Yes. Which we finally got. He got behind the wheel of the Supra. Boy, was do sure. I! I completely retract those. Sure. And this is why you have to go drive the car. Sure. Yes. It is a completely different feeling when you're driving. It does 100%. not feel claustrophobic at 100%. all. hundred percent. Guys, the seats. The seats were you love amazing. Them. You love them. I've never yeah. sat in a seat like that in a sports yeah. car before in my life. Another super chat by William. Thanks, I was William. looking to buy a BMW, but I heard you have to pull the door handle twice when getting out to open the door. Is that true? Hmm. Not that I know of. No. I've pulled the door handle twice when getting Maybe out. Maybe somebody to trying to lock it or unlock I, it. I've never, I've never heard of that. What is it, when getting I know out? to open up the hood, you have to pull on the hood release twice, and then you just lift the hood. Maybe that's what they need. Maybe. I don't know. That's a... I haven't seen that, William. It, the doors open just like any other vehicle. What is unique, though, like in the M2 competition, there's no actual park button to okay. put the the I transmission in the park. You actually just shut the car off, and it automatically goes into park. So that was a little weird. confusing and weird. Um, but definitely, I haven't heard anything about that, William. So I don't know. I get to go double check, but I... Just drove a BMW not that long ago. And, and it didn't happen. Yeah, just opened and up. Maybe the person that he heard it from was, was the, hood, the, hood, the hood. Yeah, the hood release. And they just got it confused. So, so yeah. So, definitely, Lori got to get behind the wheel of the Supra. I obviously got behind the wheel of the Supra. I'm telling you right now, if you lower your expectations and don't think about the Supras from the past, okay. think about the car right here and right now. Yes. It has a lot of BMW parts. We, we all know that. Yeah. Is the car an enthusiast sports car? Hell yes. That car awesome. was a blast to drive. And I'm not the biggest fan of automatic transmissions, but with the paddles, yeah. it was super quick upshifts, downshifts, that and the grip level, the grip level of the car, and we're not even talking about like it was on Cup 2 uh, tires. It was on Michelin Supersport tires. Unbelievable. What do you think of the sounds? The sounds, the pops, the bangs, the crackles. It sounded awesome. It, it was like nothing I've ridiculous. Ever now, does it have a ton of fake vents? Yes. Does that deserve a zonk? Yes. Stay tuned because Saturday I will be posting my full driving review. And boy, did we drive it of the Toyota Supra. Amazing. Benji. Thank yes, you so Benji, much, yes. Benji. Yeah, Benji. Benji got a little ride in the Supra. Got to hear the pops and the bangs and the crackles. It doesn't. It yeah. sounds like nothing else. Like no other car. Does else. it? Do I wish that Toyota would have taken the whole project on themselves? Yeah. I mean, that would have been nice. But 
the car performs. One thing we have to remember is the Mark V is definitely not like the Mark IV. But the I'm Mark One, Two, and Three Supras weren't like the Mark IV. So I guess those are all trash too, right? No. Those are, are still cool cars when they called it the Celica Supra. So it's funny how expectations can really make or break how you react to anything, a situation, a car, or whatever. Absolutely. With true. the Supra, listen, guys. It's very zen of you. I know. Did you like that? Not a thing. Um, my advice is if you know somebody with a Supra, pay them, beg them, pay them. something to where they will allow you to drive it. you got to drive it. You do have it, to drive it. You forget you about the BMW, it. whatever. It, the car, it, it, if I didn't want a GT350 as much as I do, the Supra would be a heavy, heavy consideration. Yeah. I, and I'm telling you right now, there's definitely more than 335 horsepower. Definitely more. So we're at an hour, but there's some questions in here. So why don't we stick around and answer a well, few questions? We start a little late. And we did start a little yeah. late. You're right. So we'll go at least another ten uh, minutes, maybe in ten more minutes. Yeah. yeah, we'll do another ten minutes. Okay. We gotta wake up early. Lori's gotta go to work. Uh, I gotta go work too, but yeah, yeah. my work's a little different. Five thirty tomorrow yeah. morning. Um, okay, so um, cheap Civic or Mustang? Because cheap is easy to fix it. Oh, wait. That was already – you answered the question. Savage yeah, yeah. Raccoon already yeah. answered it. Thank you for answering Yes. That. Okay. Um, let's scroll back up here. Okay. We're looking through the questions. We, this is what makes it hard um, when we have so many great people like yourselves. we got 111 people watching live right I now. I saw some questions here that were Maybe go a little awesome. higher or something? Yes. I'm lost in the comments, yes. guys. I'm trying. GT350R, Dodge Challenger, SRT, Hellcat. Ricardo, you already know the answer. I'm going GT350R. I don't care that a Hellcat Red Eye is going to beat me in a drag race. What I do care is that if that driver – hold on one second. Oh, this, I know. Is, this is going to be good. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were going to say – I apologize. Oh. I, I'm getting passionate again here. My question is – is it, does that Hellcat Challenger, excuse me, Challenger Hellcat driver want to go maybe like at Sebring or something like that and see how the Challenger handles compared to the GT350R? I think um, that's really where you would see what the Shelby is all about. I know from my perspective, that's what I would want to experience. And that's why, um, thanks to you guys, I'm working towards getting that GT350, and if it happens, I'm hoping it's more like a, a matter of when. Uh, when it happens, I, I want you to know that it's 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 <laughs> because of all of you from watching the channel, and I, I can't wait to share that moment with you guys when we started up at Walker Ford uh, and drive away in my own Shelby GT350. That's it almost seems so unreal to even mm. say that, to be honest with you. But that's where I'm going, <laughs> GT350 over um, Challenger. She'll be right back. <coughs> Sorry. Do you need any oxygen? You okay? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can handle this on my own here. This is uh, going to be a little tricky. Uh, Highlander 2020 will have any trims where exhaust is visible. No. So we have a question about the new Highlander. I'm sure many of you saw I went to San Antonio to test the all new Highlander. Many different trim levels, both internal combustion engine and hybrid. And for the first time, you can just get front wheel drive hybrid or the traditional all wheel drive hybrid setup. Um, none of them will have exhaust pipes showing. None of them. So, in a way, it's a good thing because at least there's no fake exhaust. I'm, I'm happy about that. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, I drove a Corvette Grand Sport on Road America and it felt like it cut through corners and hit. Yes, that's another thing. Like if it came to Corvettes, I personally would go Grand Sport over a Z06. Uh, Z06 definitely has more horsepower. Z06 is definitely faster. But the Grand Sport just, for me, it's the better balanced car. When I'm driving, I just love that overall feel of being in a balanced car. And the GT350 just... It does it for me. It, it really does. As many of you already uh, are aware. Oh, Benji, you're really, really nice with the with the Super Chats. Um, I can't – if this GT350 thing happens, it would be awesome. Let me talk about some other media events coming up. So we're definitely going to do the Chicago Auto Show. 
Lori and I are going to be going back to San Antonio for the Kia Seltos. So if you were watching the LA reviews um, from the LA Auto Show, Kia announced an all-new SUV. They actually been selling it in India first, believe it or not. It's going to slot in between the Sportage and the Soul. So far, looks cool. We're going to San Antonio in February to actually test it and put it through its paces. So I'm definitely looking forward to that um, for sure. And the great news is Lori gets to come and help me film, which is really, really awesome. Um, then in April would be the New York Auto Show. June is the Detroit Auto Show. And then we have, of course, end of October is going to be Seema. She's back. I have a lot yes. of now. Okay, good. Yes. <laughs> so I don't How are you doing? Right? <laughs> good, All right. Hang in there. Yeah. You can make it. <laughs> All right. um, so I was telling him about the media events we had going on. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, the real question. Ricardo, I'm going to say it again. Uh, and somebody else asked this question. I think the live Q&A. Do I go GT350R or GT500? This guy right here with this hat that says Rady's Rides, I'm going GT350R. Yes, the GT500 has 760 horsepower. Yes, there was that other YouTuber, um, young kid that was that did a quarter mile in 10.6 seconds and his GT500 Speed Phenom, I think his channel is called. That's great. That's awesome. I'm so happy that Ford is producing the most powerful car. That's got more horsepower than a Ford GT. That's exciting. But for me, this arm needs to be doing this. And unfortunately, the GT500, I can't row through my own gears. I got to go GT350R. And to be honest with you, I personally like the traditional analog gauge setup in the GT350R and the Voodoo engine at 8,250 RPM. I'm telling you, an angel gets their wings. Every time somebody hits 8,250 RPM in a, in a GT350 or GT350R. So those are things to remember, especially around the holidays. Um, Gabriel wants to know about a Baja review. Is that something that can I, I would love to do a Subaru Baja. I think they're cool cars. I need to find one. Some of these cars, seriously, some of these cars, I'm like, where the hell did all the cars go? That's a good point. We talk about that all the like time. Like, I go to car shows. What happened to all the Mitsubishi Eclipses? Like, oh, yeah. the cool ones, the first gen and second gen? Oh, yeah. What happened to, I used to see so many 300 ZX twin mm -hmm. turbos gone. Like, I don't see them. 3,000 GTs. I may see one every blue moon. Manny, if you want, if we skipped over your question. What happened? Um, no, he was just oh, asking okay. if you saw it. No, okay. we didn't see it. If we skipped over your question and you want us to ask it, yeah. keep asking it or super chat. There's like but I got a good I got a good question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Palisade or Highlander. Um, I'm actually gonna split the difference and go tell you right. <laughs> I, I I I'm telling you, the, the Highlander's great. It's a little tight on the third row, especially if you want a grown adult to go by back in the back section. You're probably gonna have to ask them to remove their legs and then it'd be fine. Palisade is great. I'm just, I don't love the styling as much as I do on the Telluride. I love the styling of the Telluride. Yeah. I love the interior a little bit more on the Telluride. Um, and spending all the time that I did with it in Colorado, yeah, I really got, to, I really got to enjoy it. Really, um, yeah. Highlander's great too. Listen, that oh, three row SUV. What happened? Manny, will you ask it again? Ask it, Manny, ask it again real quick and we'll see Manny it pop up. Manny has super chat? Wait, we he did it. have a super chat. Maybe if we scroll, you scroll. Keep, keep okay, scrolling. Benji. You got you to gotta go back a little bit. Oh, oh, here. oh, we oh missed sorry, it, Manny. Manny. So sorry. Manny super chatted. We're going to backtrack real quick. Joe, it's possible to review. Is it possible to review the BMW X5 M50i with third row seat option? I got kids, but love. Yes. I will be getting that together for you, Manny. I've done every other new M. X model uh, and all that kind of stuff. So I will definitely this is what add when that I to the list. I know. Myself, Manny. Yes. I am so I know. sorry. I stepped away. I know. It's, it's my fault. Trust no. me. No. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much for asking me. And again, yes. so sorry. But I, I will that. actually write that down. Okay. X5 mm -hmm. M50i. Okay. So, Manny, we will take care of that for you um, as soon as I can get back up to Furman BMW for Great. sure. But it's crazy how hotly contested 
the mid-sized three-row SUV is. It, oh my that gosh, class yeah. Explorer, like the um, Traverse, the Atlas, the Honda Pilot, the Telluride, the Palisade. It's like the list goes on and on and on forever. Yes, man, Acadia. Happy holidays. Yes, happy holidays to everybody. Oh, and Pramin um, is asking um, and asked a couple times, what's your daily driver? And are you ever going to review it? Um, I actually, you know, it's 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 funny. Lori and I have been sharing it. Uh, it's technically Lori's, but I've been uh, driving as well. Uh, a 2016 Subaru BRZ, which I actually just put up on the channel not too long ago. So we found this 2016 Subaru BRZ. One owner had 20,000 miles on it, totally stock. Lori fell in love with it. Yeah. And Well, I've been wanting to take yeah. a car to do some autocross. Yeah. And I want a fun car to row through my own years yes. because I commute. And sure. So I, you You've know, been I, using your Mazda 3, which yeah. you enjoy, but yeah, it's great you want to row through the gears. Yeah. And so we found this amazing BRZ and I've been letting Joe drive it. But yes. what is your other, I guess it's sort of a daily driver. I mean, you drive it occasionally. It is in the garage that you love so much. It's your type of ray. Yes. Yes. But it, is, it isn't my daily driver because no. you've been letting me drive the BRZ. Yeah. Well, when he gets press fleet vehicles. So yeah. That, those. And that's the, that's the thing is I'm very blessed and I'm so grateful for these companies, uh, auto manufacturers to give me access to press fleet that's vehicles. Been amazing. Like we just got done with the Supra sitting in my driveway right now is a 2020 army green Forerunner TRD Pro. Oh, it's so get ready for that. Cool. That thing is badass. Well, it's just it feels like you're in a like a just a big giant yeah. monster that wants to like drive up a wall. I can't wait for you to drive that a little bit. More. I know, me too. But we got it. Super B. Yeah, BRZ is stock. You, uh, it is stock. We bought it from a gentleman. He he must be in his late fifties. His wife was telling him he needed to get rid of it because he put an order in for a C8 Corvette. He had a couple different cars, hence the low mileage on it, and it wound up being the right car for us. I mean, so Gabriel wants to know about point of view driving reviews. I could get those together. My, my, the challenge, here's the challenge. And you guys speak up because I'm just speaking from my experience. When I watch other channels do point of view driving experiences, every little movement is picked up. Like they're even by just looking sideways, it's like you, you almost are going to get, Motion, motion sick. sickness. Yeah. That's why I haven't really done them very much. I will start. If you guys want that type of footage, I will wear a GoPro on my head. I mean, I, I have the, I have the, the way you do the, I mean, cause yeah. you do a form of point of view. It's just slightly different. Yeah. I really like it when a car has a sunroof because then the angle that I could do, yeah. it really I like that. It, it allows it nice because and open. Because it, it feels like I'm in the car with yeah. you. Yeah. And that's a nice. And I also like when you do um, the where the cameras sure. are on your face because sure. it's sometimes when you're listening to somebody talk, it's like you want to see. Yeah. It. Here's a great that's question, that. and I know many people keep asking me this: Why do I rev the engines of the cars that I review? Just because, I guess. I guess for <laughs> me, I want to know what it sounds like. So if I'm gonna do it for one, I do it for all. Mm -hmm. And I think that some people, I'm not thinking that you guys are going up at stoplights in your um, Hyundai uh, Palisade and wanting to drag race somebody. I just think it's just something nice to add. It literally takes 20 seconds. And I feel like if I didn't do it, there would be people who say, why don't you rev the engines and let you us hear the sound? You wouldn't be able to sleep at night. That's one of yeah. your things is the engine. The sound yeah, of the engine. I, and, and that's the thing is, is that I love the sound of – cars and, and trucks and everything else. So I just added in there. Manny, yes, we are coming to the New York Auto yes. Show in April and we are going to stay for an extra day because we want to try to see sure. if we can do the public show sure. too. So we'd love to meet sure. you and we'll definitely let you know about that. Yeah, that definitely. Really awesome. Definitely. Durango SRT review anytime soon. Did you already know? Let, let me, no, I have not. Let me, let me tell you guys about, so there are still car dealerships and auto manufacturers that still don't, I don't know if they don't believe in what I'm doing. I don't know if they feel that I'm worthy enough to have access to their vehicles. They Dodge, don't understand. Yeah, they don't understand. I mean, that's the bottom line. But most of them that don't that don't give yeah. us access to the car, they're yeah. like, how much do you charge? And we're like, wait, no, you don't understand sure. YouTube. That's not how it works. So I'm still working very hard to get into a Dodge dealership. I had access to one, but they wouldn't let me drive any of the vehicles. So I said, thank you for your time. And, and I... 
uh, we're at the point now where the cars need to be driven. I'm driving them for literally five or 10 minutes. It's not that big of a deal. If I wanted to buy the car, I'm sure they would let me drive it. Um, another thing is, is that manufacturers are starting to take notice of what Radies Ride is doing. Let me just tell you some quick stats because this is all because of you guys. We do the work. You guys are the ones that are watching. So right now on Radies Rides, we're averaging about 5 million views a month. Now, remember, we are putting up at least one video per day, which takes a lot of work, editing, and everything else. So I appreciate, I know Lori appreciates you guys watching the yeah, ads. We, we That's really where do. we get our revenue. I promised you guys, and I will keep that promise, that I am not doing any infomercial style endorsements. There, I, I'm turning down, I keep getting my email gets blocked up with companies. Can you review this product? Can you review that product on the channel? No, I don't want this to be an infomercial channel. I want this to be a channel of us sharing our passion for cars and knowledge and everything else. The good news is, is that many of you watch the ads and that allows us to do what we do without having to rely on other companies to, to give us product to try to advertise to you guys, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. So thank you guys for doing that. And it just allows us to keep it does. bringing you the constant. And keep zonking. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like we want to be able to point out the things that we don't yeah. know. I mean, Joe is a firm believer, and I am sure. sure that I'm, you guys are probably too. Sure. But there's no perfect car. And so it's like what are some things that maybe could be better or that you don't necessarily love? It's just nice to yeah. know that. And, and Plus, I, it's fun. And I've had car dealerships that say, zone. yeah. <laughs> And, and, and I think that's one of the many reasons why you come to the channels for the Zongs. I and, mean, so, and I want to point out, there's some really, really nice comments coming in here about how much folks love the videos. Um, you know, Biohazard loves the videos. Um, somebody else wrote some really nice comments. Um, love how you uh, descriptive. The videos, the videos are, are happy holidays. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much, Eddie. And then also, Abhishek Jane wants to know if you could please do a video driving on the drive. You know, that's probably going to be coming for next year. So I am very grateful for a person that I can call a friend now. His name is Davis. He works for uh, Honda, American Honda. And uh, what we're going to try to do next year in 2020 is we're going to try to find some time He's going to give us access to a Honda Civic Type R press fleet vehicle, and we are going to drive. Lori and I are going to drive. Listen, this, this is something that Joe has been talking about since the first, since before we started the channel. Yeah. Since he and I first met, this is something that put I- it Here, put it this way. Let me let me tell you guys something a little personal. And I, I know that I've discussed this with you, and I hope it's okay that I share this information with sure. them. When I pass away- Oh, thank you, Eric. If you if don't get that, yes, oh. that's right. Yes, that. Thank you, Eric. That's really awesome. So true. Thank you, Eric, for the super chat. We appreciate your support. You're you're awesome. But let me let me just tell you, you were something. You're getting a little morbid yes. out here. I'm not getting morbid. It's I just want to let them know wh where I'm coming from. Okay. So when I pass away, uh, you know, I want to be cremated. I want my ashes to be spread, basically four places. Four. I hold up three. You four, did. I'm sorry. Four places. Right. Okay. I want my ashes spread at Daytona International Speedway. Okay. I want some of my ashes at Sebring International Raceway. Okay. I want some of my ashes in Paris. Oh, well, that sounds nice. Yes, because that's where we got married. And then the last place would be the Dragon. The Dragon has been a location for me, like a, like a mecca in a way, where I have gone there in a car. I've also done it on a motorcycle. And that area of North Carolina and Tennessee, first of all, the scenery is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the roads are second to none. Yeah. And there is a road, if you're unaware, guys, in between. It literally connects North Carolina with Tennessee and vice versa called the Dragon. 318 turns and 11 miles. Wow. That's that's that place is just a little little piece of heaven for for people who like things with engines. Yes, but that wasn't too morbid, was it? It well, it was definitely emotional. And thank you for sharing that with us. Yes. In fifty years, I'll have to come back and watch this video because yes. I did not take notes. 
So, and if I did, it'd be on a sticky note, and we all know <laughs> yes, what happens yes, to sticky that's notes. That's right. You'll that's never that's, see it again. That's, that's just, no, I think yeah. that that's super powerful. I, and yeah. uh, that's, what, that's what cars and, and driving mean to me. I mean, I love it that much. Uh, you know what, Lisa Anderson, um, Joe has been asking me to do one for a while. I have. He has been asking me to do one for a while. It's been really busy for Lori, me. Work, Lori, Lori. Work, we're working on it. Yeah, Lori has been slammed. She puts in a lot of hours. Plus, she uses her vacation time, guys, to go to the auto shows with me to film. Uh, that's her vacation. Um, so thank you, Lori. And I promise that we will get her more involved with the with the the driving reviews and all yeah, that kind well, of stuff. You can definitely count on when we start taking the BRZ yeah. to the yeah. autocross events, yes. there's gonna be some excitement it, and yeah. I'm gonna be one Def gonna be one behind Yes, the definitely March. We already have some events planned that we're and, gonna do. And thank you, Lisa. Yes. If there's anything in particular you guys want me to review, let me know. Because that certainly will help push sure. me over the edge of making the time. And I and I want I want you guys to hear her perspective because obviously we're two separate people mm -hmm. and it's nice to get a different view on, on what we and plus I think they would all agree that you're wonderful on camera and you have one of the best speaking voices I've ever heard. Well, thank you. Yes. That's very nice. Yes. I'll read story time books to everyone later when it's time for bed. <laughs> and speaking of bed, I think it is. Is it time for bed? We've oh, been well, on. Bimmer wants to know. I'm going to tell you. Joe is a better driver. He's a really, really good driver. I'm, I'm good. But he's a better. He's just had more training. I mean, you've been to different schools and had a lot of experience. I mean, yeah. he was a race car driver. Yeah. You know, he had to learn how to drive a race car in the rain. I have not actually had Yeah, a driving car. a race car in the rain was probably this, one of the scariest things I've ever experienced. But, you know, once I got my first one under the belt, then I was funny. like, what? This is funny. AO Automotive Reviews, awesome reviews. Keep up the good work. If you remember uh, me at Reeves when you said hello and sped off in the LC. <laughs> What's up? Yes, I remember. I remember saying hello to you there, uh, and I definitely remember the LC five hundred. Uh, guess what? By the way, this year expect to see unveiled. They are coming out with an LCF twin turbocharged LCF. So get ready for that. Well, and Merry Christmas, Lisa. And you know, I have to say, it's probably time for us to yes, let everybody go. Yes, I am. Go. I'm getting a little. Yes, yes. Here. as you start talking about all kinds of emotional yes. things, which that's what we love about you. Yes. So stay tuned for more of these guys coming up, and we will keep you posted on when the next live Q&A is. And if we don't see you in the – which we will, we'll see you in the comments. Yeah, of course. But in person, we want to wish everybody a very happy holiday, happy new year. And yeah, whatever you celebrate, celebrate it well. Be healthy yeah. and happy with your family and friends. Benji, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. A big yee. Yeah, much uh, yes. You're going to have to tell me what that I is. I it. It's a big one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, happy holidays. We wish you guys everything all good with your family. Thank you so much. And for it's 2020. All your yes. 2020 is going to be, 2019 has been a big year for us. 2020 is going to be even better. And we're so glad that you're on this journey with us. Every step of the way, especially some of you have been there since the beginning. I yeah. Mean, I mean, we just had just, a thousand subscribers. They, I mean, you guys know that have been watching. You know how crazy this is and exciting it is. And we just, every day, we want you to know that yes. every day we're grateful. Every day we appreciate you. Yes. And, and we count our blessings. We know how lucky we are to have you and have the support. And, and to be able, able to do, do what, we, what we do. I never thought in a million years that I would be able to share my passion with cars, with so many great people and interact with so many of you and meet so many of you. That's our goal. Yeah. Is 2020. We, we want to meet, meet more. You. Yeah. That more really of you is in person um, just to make it the ride that much better. But I guess it's about that time. It is about that time. Happy holidays, Happy guys. Holidays. We are going to go to bed. Yes. And just like always, we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next ride. ride. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.